Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today we've got some pretty massive news in regards to the next generation of virtual reality, specifically the next generation of PlayStation virtual reality. Now, before I begin, everything I'm about to discuss was brought to light, as far as I can tell, by the Without Parole YouTube channel. So Brian Paul, Without Parole, there had been rumors of this uh, behind closed doors uh, PSVR 2 event that was taking place for possible developers. I don't know who was there, who wasn't. But somehow or other, uh, without parole, got their hands on some of the information. I assume they have someone talking to them there from the inside, maybe. They then brought to light all these juicy details for us to salivate over. And somebody has put together this post on Redis, and that somebody is we underscore r7 anonym. So that's the person who did that and basically broke everything down that was in that video into bullet points that are going to be pretty easy for us to digest here and go over them one by one. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting with the first point is that the headset is currently being referred to by Sony as NGVR. So the NG stands for next generation. This, if some of you may remember all the way back when the Vita was you know rumored and being leaked and all that stuff that was called the ngp so next generation portable next generation virtual reality of course fingers crossed this doesn't end up the same way visa ended up you know so it might be interesting to note that with the psp they did not go for psp2 they went for ps vita and it looks like maybe that's the kind of way they're doing it now, but judging by the fact that they've still got this code name, instead of calling it the PSVR 2, I mean, it could just be their practice to keep things codenamed, but I get the feeling it's not going to be called PSVR 2. But for the sake of it making it easy for us to understand, for the sake of talking about us, I'm still going to refer to us for now as the PSVR 2 until they say different. So the next point we want to talk about is that it will use Fresnel OLED screens with a 2000 by 2040 resolution per eye. So there's a couple of things to break down here. First thing we should look at is that it's OLED screens confirmed, which is pretty impressive. Those are some pretty high quality screens. I believe like the blacks or whatever look excellent on OLEDs. 2000 by 2040 per eye together that makes up a 4K image. So it's 4K. Now this part here that it's using Fresnel, presumably this is gonna be what they're talking about the lenses here, basically. If you want to know what Fresnel is, I would say take a look at what the Quest is doing there. They're using Fresnel lenses too, and many people would say that that's a bad thing. Uh, so Fresnel being mentioned here is a, a little bit of a, like a concern. However, Sony are kind of like experts when it comes to hardware. Maybe they got a good reason for using this. Maybe their Fresnel technique will be better than other Fresnel techniques. I don't know. Even if it is Fresnel and, and that's not the best, we still, we're still talking OLED. We're still talking 4K, 2000 per eye. It's going to be a huge boost over what we have on PSVR 1. Next point is that it's 4K with HDR. That's the display. That's the actual screen inside itself, not leaving the lenses inside. It's a 4K screen with HDR display. And of course, HDR refers to high dynamic range. It gives you like brighter brights and darker darks and it's like a, a bigger contrast to us. It's kind of all the rage right now when it comes to 4K televisions and all that kind of stuff. Next up then is the FOV is 110 degrees. So that means the field of view. That means how wide you can see when you put that thing on. I believe the current PSVR is 90. According to this, it's 100. That can't be right. Oh wait, it could be right. This is 110. Okay, so the current one we have now is 100 degrees, PSVR is 100 degrees, PSVR 2 is going to improve that by 10 degrees, so that should be noticeable, you're going to have just that extra bit of width when you're in there. Uh, compared to everything else on the market, I think the Valve Index is the only one that's higher, I googled that, and it's, according to that it's 130 degrees. Uh, of which 120 is perceivable or something like that. There's some little caveat that goes along with this. I'm not technical enough to understand exactly what that means. But basically, this will be an improvement. It's not going to be the top, top, top of the line, but still better than what we have in terms of FOV. Next up, it's going to use flexible scaling resolution in addition to foveated rendering, which used in conjunction, 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 eye tracking 
both which aims to scale resolution based upon the user's concentrated view and reduces the strain on the PS5's resources. This is perhaps the biggest point. Maybe it's a little bit hard to understand as well, it's kind of a little bit confusing if you don't know what the hell they're talking about. We've already heard of foveated rendering being used in conjunction with eye tracking. This flexible scaling resolution, I guess that's just like a term. Sony have come up with it, but basically I think it's the same thing that we already kind of talked about in the past. Basically, with eye tracking, the PSVR 2 is going to be able to know where your eyes are looking on the lens. So it's going to be able to focus the resources or the resolution to the specific spots you're looking at. So the areas you're not looking at, they can, you know, lower dynamically the resolution. And that means the PS5 isn't going to have to expend all the horsepower to render the whole full image, just the spots you're looking at. And it's able to do this very fast so that you can look wherever you want and it's just going to be sharp wherever you're looking, you know? And the potential benefits of that are massive, as I guess we'll kind of get into in a sec. But yeah, we've been saying this for like months now, maybe longer. Fovia is at rendering, eye tracking, that's like a game changer. I would imagine this is the biggest advantage that PSVR 2 is going to have over PSVR 1. It should be, it's probably going to feel like more, more than just a generation. It's going to feel like a massive leap forward. Next up then, haptics are planned for the headset itself to reduce motion sickness and improve immersion. We did hear this rumored before, so it looks like this is somewhat confirmed. If all this is to be trusted, which I believe it probably is, of course, everything is subject to change. Probably sort of should have said that at the beginning of the video that, you know, we're still over a year away from this thing coming out. Most likely, I think they're targeting holiday 2022, according to other rumors. So it's definitely possible for things to improve or change, get worse, be removed, be added, whatever. It's interesting that the haptics, so they're putting some kind of in like a motor or something that will vibrate on your head. And that's going to be some kind of technique that will be used to reduce motion sickness. So that's kind of interesting. I'm sure there's some science in there backing that up. Next up, another very important thing, the new controllers, which of course, they're the, the first thing they showed off. They're officially out there. The controllers exist. We know what they look like. We know every single button on them. New controllers will be packaged with every new next gen VR headset at launch. So you cannot buy a PSVR 2 without getting those controllers with us. So you could buy a PSVR headset and you could play games and never have bought the move controllers. Whereas with this, when a developer is making a game for the PSVR 2, that developer is going to know that every single PSVR 2 gamer has access to these controllers, or, or they should. And that means they can design their game fully if they want with that in mind. Of course, there was games that did that already, but there was a lot of them that just supported DualShock as well only. You'd wonder maybe would things have been different if moves were bundled in with the PSVR 1 from the beginning? Who knows? But that's not something we have to worry about with next gen. Next up, the controllers will include capacitive touch sensors, which are analog based and can track the distance between your fingers and thumb. This is in addition to haptics and adaptive triggers, which have already been announced. So even though haptics and triggers have indeed already been announced, I feel like we already kind of heard about these as well. Maybe not the, the analog part, that's new information, but I think we already saw, and I'm gonna look up the controllers now. Here, this is what I want, I think. This is like a prototype testing. Anyway, probably not important if that was already announced or not. It's confirmed pretty much here. And so what does that mean? It means there's gonna be a limited form of finger tracking, I guess you could say. Um, if it is true that it doesn't track the bottom two, then that's what makes it kind of limited. Uh, but this is gonna be one of those things where it's gonna be up to developers to come up with different uses for this type of control method and I'm sure they'll come up with some creative stuff to make that fun to use. Just begging for someone like Kojima to come along and do something crazy with that. So next up, Sony want to move away from virtual reality experiences, which is, you know, experiences is like a slur used against virtual reality enthusiasts such as ourselves. If you're watching this, you're probably an enthusiast, maybe. But it's kind of like, you know, all those games aren't proper games. They're just two-hour experiences, even though we've had our long games. We have ports of Skyrim and stuff like that, for God's sake, you know, 300 hours long. There is, there's like, there's no doubt that there is a lot of those short games. Developers have designed them to be short because they maybe feel like 
your typical average Joe can't handle a full, proper experience in virtual reality. Sony want to move away from that and concentrate on AAA games with an aim to make hybrid games that are playable in both flat screen and virtual reality. When those titles launch, you can even select which version you want to download. So I would add this, this, and this are the two most exciting things. I guess because I kind of feel like we heard a lot of this other stuff already. Uh, but this is huge. I mean, you ask me what my favorite PS Viewer game is, it's Resident Evil 7. And this is basically, Resident Evil 7 was like the first one that did this. It was a hybrid game. You could play it flat, you could play it virtual reality. The developers, well, we assume Sony paid Capcom to go out of their way to make a separate virtual reality mode that people could optionally opt into. And they did that, and we had a full AAA experience. It was fantastic. Still my favorite VR game. You know, Firewall, close second, but you know, that's multiplayer. It's like a different apples, oranges, you know? But this is huge. I mean, one of the biggest complaints, if not the biggest complaint about virtual reality as it is now, there's not enough big games. And there's certainly not enough AAA games. You know, I mean, there's games that you could say are AAA for VR but not AAA compared to flat AAA, if you know what I mean. And with this quote, I mean, I made a video a couple of weeks ago about, you know, I was ranking how likely Sony first party studios, I thought, were to actually make a game for PS Viewer 2, and I ranked them all based on, you know, Sony London had a history of making PS Viewer 1 games, so I put them up very high, and Naughty Dog were down here somewhere because they never showed any interest. But now, Sony really believed this, and if they're really pushing this, then I think I, I'm going to move all those studios up a couple of notches at least. Some of them are like, you would imagine if Sony really want to push this, and they should. I mean, if they're doing this at all, they should be pushing this. Then surely they're saying, okay, Naughty Dog, you're making this game, that's fine. Just make sure it's compatible with virtual reality for people who want to play it that way. And then Neil Druckmann says, all right, Sony, you're the boss. You pay the bills. I'll do what you say. So that's very, very exciting. Uh, at the very least, we should see more outputs from the first party stuff, even if second party and third party doesn't take off as quickly. Although I'm certain Sony will be incentivizing these second party and third party developers with, you know, the old incentives. The same incentives they gave to Capcom, talk about your GTAs, never mind GTA 5, GTA 6, at launch with viewer support. That seems, that seems possible now with all this kind of talk with the kind of technology that we know was going into it now, it seems, you know, very plausible. And that's why I'm saying it feels more like a massive jump, you know? PS4 as it was now, it kind of feels like PS1. But according to all this, if all this is true and it works the way we think it works, it's like they're jumping from PS1 and they've caught up to us now on PS5 in one generation. That's how it feels. Just reading a list, watching a without parole video, that seems to be what it is. I mean, you name the game, you name the AAA game and there's like no reason it can't be ported to virtual reality in some way. Even if it's not built from the ground up. I mean, let's look at Resident Evil 4 for Quest, they kind of rebuilt that, they added a lot more. Like you pick up the actual ammo boxes and stuff. Compare that to Resident Evil 7 where they didn't really do a whole lot. Had the head aiming, but they didn't bring in motion controllers or any of that stuff. But even so excellent game so you like i'll take what i can get when it comes to that kind of thing so next point nothing was mentioned regarding backwards compatibility for ps viewer one uh, i guess that should be a big concern for people because that is one thing i see asked a lot anytime i talk about ps viewer 2 next generation a lot of people in the comments kind of bring up will it be backwards compatible with ps viewer one so nothing was mentioned but there is a push to remaster some PS Viewer 1 games. So that's interesting. The fact that there's a push at all, you know, definitely raises some questions as to whether there is going to be backwards compatibility. Then the remasters raise their own questions. Are we talking about if you already own us, is it going to be free? Is it going to be like Ghost of Tsushima where you got to pay 10 euros or 10 dollars to get the enhancements because it is extra work, you would imagine. Is it going to be the greatest hits? remastered or is it going to be you know just the sony first party stuff blood and truths uh firewall stuff like that i know firewall is made by first contact but sony owned that ip so it would be technically a first party remake for them a remaster and then the final point uh also a pretty important point because it kind of sets their expectations on how long we gotta wait uh launch plans will be revealed in early 2022 will we see the headset before then i don't know that's what we're in august now it's probably gonna be another five or six months minimum 
before we hear about the launch plans. I think the reason they showed the controllers is probably because they were afraid of leaks. I mean, all this got leaked, so maybe they were wise to do that. Maybe the headset's just not finalized yet. Maybe that leads a lot more time. But yeah, I mean, a lot of this is kind of stuff we kind of suspected already or was already leaked or was already rumored, but this feels a lot solid now. This feels a lot more locked in place. These two paragraphs, these two points I've highlighted, these are super exciting, even if we already kind of suspected the foveas of rendering, but just this fact now that Sony are pushing for the AAA quality coming to VR. I guess you could argue that this might be a little bit of bad news for, you know, those smaller studios who have really found a footing in this generation. They found themselves an audience because those AAAs weren't there and uh, people were kind of just buying other games that maybe they wouldn't ordinarily have, so maybe those kind of games would be overshadowed by big blockbuster games. Uh, like, if Battlefield came, uh, is that bad news for Firewall or Alvo, you know, Rainbow Six Siege? If that came, is that bad news? You know, should they be worried? My opinion, you can never have too many, you know? Uh, let the market decide or whatever. You know, this is just exciting. This is exciting. All right, so that's that's all I can say. Let me know in the comments what you think about all these. I mean, there's a, probably a big discussion to be had about this. Um, your thoughts on the specs. Do you think this is... Is this future-proofed enough? Because this is probably going to have to do us for like nearly, nearly 10 years, maybe. With that in mind, do you think this is this is going to have the legs? Is this going to be what we what we need? There's been a bit of doom and gloom lately surrounding PC VR. Some people claiming that it's dead, that it's not being supported anymore, that Quest is kind of the focus now, and there's no question, I don't think, that Quest is the focus now. Quest is kind of the hot headset. It's what these companies are targeting. It's what, like, nobody's really talking about PSVR anymore. There's a few people talking about the Valve and stuff like that, but Quest is the hotness right now. However, I think we're looking at the, the future hotness. You know, Quest days are definitely numbered, in my opinion, rightfully so, because Quest is kind of holding everyone else back being the lowest common denominator but this is a substantial step forward this you know a rising tide raises all the boats so psvr2 i think is going to raise quite a, a significant amount of boats maybe this is going to be good news for pc viewer too you know a lot more ports can go back and forward now a lot more games maybe are going to become more viable anyway let me know all your thoughts on this in the comments below and uh we'll spill the tea girl as we say on the streets. And that is it for this video, lads and ladies. Before I end the video, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping keep this channel nice and moist. In particular, let me thank the following top tier Patreon supporters. Pete Hawkins, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Tradition, and Crumb. Thank you very much for your support. If you'd like to help me on Patreon, the link for that will be in the description as well. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. Check him out, Decepticon.com, link in the description. Also, that is it for this video, lads and ladies. Please stay exceptionally moist. And it won't be hard with news like this. Petrifying pumpkin.